reaction to hearing the Roadrunners pick second place in this conference? It makes me proud, I'll be honest with you. I, I, you know, I've dealt with this a lot in my career, uh, so I've got, to get, I've got to answer this quite a bit. Uh, when we were great at Gilmer all those years, we were always picked, but I told them all the time, they're not getting picked because they've done anything. They're getting picked because they're buddies. And some of them, they were just younger, have done a lot. You know, in the last four years, we're 29 and four in conference play. We've had the opportunity to play the very last week of the season. Every single year that we've been here, to an opportunity to go to that championship game, we succeeded twice. We did not succeed twice. But when you're in the hunt to the very last week every year, it's just a, a good feeling. We're 27 and three at home in the last four years. We won two conference championships. That's why we're picked second, right? Uh, it's not that we've done anything yet. We haven't done a thing yet. Uh, but the last four years, I'm really proud uh, of what our kids have accomplished. Internally, how do you guys set the expectations for this team to accomplish one of those conversations? I know y'all get tired of hearing it's boring. We don't talk about it. Uh, we're going to be true to the triangle. We're going to be true to our culture. We're going to try to win the day every day. We don't talk about results. We don't talk about winning or losing. We literally do our thing every day. And, you know, we just feel like we get a little bit better every day. And we stay loving each other and serving each other. Tougher than the other guy. We'll be fine at the end of the year. It's, just, it's how we believe. And I know all y'all roll your eyes. You'll probably call me Belichick. But that's, that's how we truly feel. Is the playoff ever brought up as a motivator? You know, this is the first time ever we've ever actually discussed it. Because it's a real possibility, right? So it's a slight culture violation. Uh, but I do think that needs to be put in the back of their mind because in the past, those games in September, are they important? Are they not important? Sure, they're all important, but not in October and November and December. I, that's not true anymore at UTSA. The games in September are now just as important as the games in December if you really think you have a chance to go to the 12, and we feel like we are good enough to be in that conversation. Going back to... You know, uh, we really started playing our best ball last year, right, when we got the conference play. Uh, extremely disappointed that we couldn't take care of the ball in Tulane that day. Uh, I will say Willie's teams are known for doing that to people. Uh, I just didn't think it would happen to us, and he got us as well. Uh, there's no doubt we belong in the league and we can play in the league, uh, but he didn't win it. So we're going to be seen as the guys that didn't win it. Went on the road to Tulane and didn't get it done. So what can we do to be better, put ourselves in a position to get to that point again, but this time finish the deal? Going back to your days at Gilmer High School, being that you didn't have any influence as far as recruiting goes, is who walks through your doors. How did you build it into the powerhouse that it became? Oh, it was a lot of things. Uh, I say it all the time. Our administration at Gilmer really believed in us. Uh, we had a wonderful superintendent. We had a wonderful school board. Uh, and that stuff always goes from the top down. And uh, then we started winning games. And it's kind of uh, the old snowball effect. You know, it starts off the top of the mountain, just keeps rolling, 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 and the momentum gets going. And really proud of that place. I got to be there this year to watch the state championship game. All those guys are my former assistants. I've got cousins, I've got nephews. My first quarterback ever at Gilmer, coaches the receivers there, Owen Johnson. Daniel Dye coaches the linebackers. He was my state champion linebacker my first one in 04. It just goes on and on. And uh, it's always the people. Uh, great assistants, great players, uh, administration, school board, community. Uh, championships aren't won by just like a coach or a player. It's, it's, a, it's a much bigger thing to win championships. The, the depth of your team this year, at least on paper, looks pretty strong despite losing some key pieces from last year's team. You think that translates into to the wins for the Roadrunners this year? Uh, well, I would hope it's going to help uh, because the depth has competition. Uh, then you're playing a lot of people. You hope you stay healthier through the year. Um, it's the old deal you've heard it many times, iron sharpens iron. We do feel good about that. Uh, we're deeper, to your point. In almost every position, uh, we've taken a couple of hits and injuries already this summer that will stress us uh, in one spot. Uh, but other than that, we feel like we're pretty deep in the rest of them.
What is, what is uh, it remains to be seen. What is your mind to do uh, you know, Jamal and Oscar both have started, I would imagine, I'm not factual of this, but they've been in the 2D for sure, or started every game that I've coached here. And uh, he's just an amazing human. Uh, he's been in a single digit, I would say at least two years, possibly three. I'm not sure that exactly. High IQ, high character, tough guy. He's from East Texas. What else would you expect? Did you uh, handpick Oscar and Jamal to be the guys here today, or how did that come together? Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, those two guys have earned it. There's other guys that have as well. I was hoping we could bring four. I thought we were going to be able to bring four. Uh, so I had a couple. I actually had three guys. It kind of hurt me to tell them they weren't coming. Uh, but it, it's why were they the right choices with things out of our country? Consistency, performance on the field, performance off the field, uh, the way they handle their business. I've already stated those guys that got in the port were made you know, way more money. Uh, we're, we're, we're taking care of them. Those guys are paid well, but a fraction of what they would have made, they would have gone somewhere else. And those guys never brought it up. It's never been discussed. Their families are a part of that. Their high school programs they came from are a part of that. Uh, and I hope for the way we treat them uh, as a part of that. Jeff, how is uh, NIL doing at uh, UTSA currently? I think if you look at the top of this league, the way it was announced this morning, all those teams are pretty strong on NIL. What are the, what are the roadrunners stack up right now? I would say we are 50% uh, of where uh, the teams at the top of the league are. We are getting better every day. Extremely grateful to Mark Salinas, April and Sarah, Pat Kleins, Bob Wills. Those guys have been the ones that have been the heavy carriers of this. Uh, I'm excited to see where the vision goes uh, of our own athletic department, uh, just to see you know, what the future looks like with revenue sharing for us, which I think would take some pressure off uh, of some of our boosters. Uh, but I'd say we're 50% compared to the top guys. It seems like the athletic department is being more vocal about it this offseason. You think that's fair or something that's noticeable? Well, because the, the rules have changed now, uh, our athletic department is allowed to be uh, involved in it much more than they ever have been before. So I know I read an article in the San Antonio Express News written by the famous Greg Luca <laughs> that Dr. Compost has a vision staff, potential hirings down the road, uh, where I could see that becoming an umbrella uh, in our own building one day, uh, because that's where the game is headed. And, uh, I know she has a plan for that. Outside of just UTSA, what makes San Antonio special, and why should athletes consider coming to play for UTSA, being that it is in San Antonio? Again, it's the people. It's the greatest city in the country, in my opinion. I know I'm a homer, but I really love the people. Uh, just the whole city. Leadership down uh, is a servant attitude. They're, they're humble, they're grateful, they're loyal, they're family people. And uh, it's just a cool city. And I, I love living there. It's, and when my players come, it's, it's very touristy. We've got a ton of fun stuff to do uh, from the river walk to, you know, you can go to Spurs games. We've got Fiesta, Texas. We've got Rivers. We've got, uh, you name it, theme parks. There's nothing you can't do, and the food is better than the other food around as well, especially if you like a good breakfast taco. Jeff, could you see Oscar and Jamal potentially being the number zero guys for this year? See how that plays out. I know they're replacing two legends. Uh, I'll probably have to call Frank and Rashad and get their blessings uh, once the teams, or should we let them vote? I mean, should their vote count? You know, our coaches' votes count five, our seniors count four, juniors three, Sophomores two, freshmen one. Should Frank and Rashad's vote count ten and they had to <laughs> stamp it before it's approved? Great idea there. Is there a lot of a lot of pressure on whoever takes that role next just because of Frank and Rashad? I would say so. But you know, pressure's a privilege. But yeah, whoever gets those two numbers, um, it'll take a unique dude. And it'll be interesting to see if they take the number. You know, there there are guys that have been voted 
that stayed in their number. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if it were those two guys, would they give up eight and nine to go to zero? Brandon Brown, Joe Evans, that would be interesting. It's all new territory. We've had the same four guys, we've had the same two guys wear those numbers for four straight years. Coach, on the topic of Frank Harris, uh, can you tell us about what life has been like without him uh, there? And uh, kind of what is your confidence level in that position? I still talk to Frank. He's still my biggest fan, booster, supporter of our program. Frank's probably the number one reason our NIL has increased. He's connected me to so many guys that he runs into in his business world now. Uh, he works for Documation and does a fantastic job for those guys. So he's still helping the program always. Uh, the great thing about coaching Frank was he was Frank. He was so tough, a winner. But what was the negative of that? He got hit a lot. He was injured quite a bit. So Owen and Eddie have gotten to play quite a bit, and that's going to help us moving forward. Do you have a time frame of when you want to name starting quarterback? Um, they might be out there together on the first snap, and then you'll have to figure out who's going to take the second snap to be seen. What does each quarterback bring to the race? One's right-handed, one's left-handed, so we can have a heck of an offense. We put them both out there together. Um, they're, they're similar. They, they're very accurate passers. They're very good at throwing the ball down the field. They're, where, they're, they're both way better athletes than they're given credit for. Uh, they're both tough kids. They, they both come from great families. Uh, we are very high on both those young men. And I don't want to diminish the other three because those are really good players too. I'm just being very honest and transparent. Those two guys are at the top right now. Uh, but Demetrius Davis, who came in here, played at North Shore, won state championships there. Uh, Jackson from Ennis, a great player there. And Brandon from Gilmer, all championship pedigrees that we feel good about the future of our quarterback room. Jeff, how's uh, JT Clark doing? What's his status and, I guess, timetable? You know, he's looking way better than he did last year at this time, obviously. Uh, I'm not going to pressure him at all in any way. Uh, we're not going to put him out there until – trainers are 100 percent sure he's ready to go i know his spirits his mind he's in a way better place than he was last year jeff whether you talk about uh, jamal and oscar or some of the other guys who are in leadership positions this year it just seems like kind of a different personality than frank and rashad is that kind of a reflection of the team overall how are things different well frank and rashad their personalities are larger than life and oscar and uh, jamal are just like uh, your old grandpas you've loved your whole life. I mean, they probably have coffee. They're probably up early in the morning. Who knows? They probably make their bed up. And, you know, they're, I just see those two being old souls where Frank and Rashad, just getting him here, it was a bickering contest the entire time. They're probably still bickering somewhere. Just totally different personalities, but they're all cut the same way. They're honest people. They're men of integrity. They're tough people. Just way different personalities. Yeah, and you said some similar things about like Brandon Brown and Ken Robinson and a lot of the other guys who are in that position. Is it just kind of different being around the building day to day with some of the guys? We still have some characters. Uh, <laughs> We, we've still got Martavius. We've still, we've still got a couple of guys that, that are, we got Donye <laughs> running around. There's no doubt. We've got a, some juice in there, but most of our guys are serious, old, boring people that I love coaching. But yeah, I got Donye and Martavius to, uh, to keep the party, Vinley, <laughs> to keep the party alive. Jeff, how's the, how did Denver Harris do during the summer workouts? And I guess what did, what kind of role do you anticipate for him? That's up to Denver. He's been great so far. Uh, we, we, we have known him for a long time. We know his high school coaches very well. We have one of his high school coaches on our team. We've got a ton of North Shore players on our team. And, uh, you know, Joe Willie, uh, he, he's had a great relationship with him, obviously. But Nick Graham is as good as there are in the country at developing corners, and uh, we just we just go deeper there. We want Denver to be an unbelievable man, a human, and uh, that's where we're going to start. If he'll do that, he'll be a really good corner. If he doesn't do that, you are never going to know how good of a corner he can be. How does the ability to have the health communication and the tablet tablet sort of change things about the way you're going to operate in the game? It's a good question. Uh, I don't know that we know for sure that just yet. We haven't got to practice with it yet. So we'll find out. Uh, I would rather there be 
know, five on each side of the ball, so there's no more signaling at all. I don't see how we're going to avoid not signaling. We're still going to signal. Because we're only been talking to one kid. So we've got to get that our arms wrapped around that. We'll, we'll keep playing with it, which we are, and experimenting. Uh, but I'm not sure how that's going to really affect the game yet. I guess the other option would be you'd have to huddle essentially every play to get that. You're not going to see that from the runners. <laughs> I can promise. You. I'd be bored in tears. <laughs> Jeff, what's your... Uh, watch the NFL if you want to watch a bunch of huddling. <laughs> the road runners will not be huddling. I know it's a... Uh, no, we do sugar huddle. We get in there quickly and bust out real fast. We yeah. got a little bit more of that, but we won't be an old-fashioned huddle, pro right, Z motion, <laughs> F return, 18 more words of a play call. <laughs> that will not be the road runners. We'll, we'll have one word and play as fast as possible. Jeff, what's your uh, early take on the conference? Last year it was kind of top-heavy and a lot of parity after the first handful of teams. Uh, it looks like it could maybe be the same this year. I don't know that we ever really know. I mean, obviously Tulane with their history, Memphis with their history, those guys are going to always be up there. Army's given us fits. Yeah. You know, those guys have been a pain in our tail. We've had some very close games in the last four years. I mean, Kyle's hit some stats of the day. We're, we're right at the top five in the country who's played the most one possession games in four years. Uh, we've just been blessed and by far won the most of those one possession games. So uh, a lot of that winning one possession games, and I would imagine you'll, you'll keep seeing that in this league. And then not to have a culture fit of violation, but just the, the schedule overall, you have two bye weeks. It's a, it's a lot different than schedules in the last few seasons for you. Obviously, some tough games in the non-conference. I'll be What's positive, your then I'll be negative. Yeah. Positive, uh, you know, I think it's cool. You just drive to Texas State. You drive to the University of Texas. I mean, uh, then we got the two home games. So the yeah. first four games, our fans should be able to watch every one of our games, right? That's a real positive. The negative to me is you've got young quarterbacks, whichever one we go with, and we've got three of our first five on the road, four of our first six on the road. The schedule favors the road runners way later in the season as far as home games early. You play like for your young quarterbacks who've been at home a lot early. It's not the way it turned out. Uh, either Eddie or Owens would go on the road and try to figure out a way to beat you know, Texas State, where DJ's done a great job. Sark, who they're on a whole other level right now. Then we got to go to East Carolina and play Mike Houston, who's done a fantastic job. They've got a, a proud program. So that's going to be tough on the road runners early. We're going to be able to play great defense and run the football and let our young quarterbacks grow up. I apologize if I've already been asked about this, but you guys have played Army a couple of times over the years. I mean, what are your thoughts on the conference? They're a pain in our butt. I mean, let's be honest. Jeff does a fantastic job. Those guys are physically and mentally tough. I, I tell my own players, I think they're the only team that's has been more physical, more mentally tough than we have, that we've played. And uh, our guys are reminded of that daily as a compliment to Army, in no way as an insult. Yeah. I mean, what is the challenge of now having two offensive teams in this conference? Say that one more time. Yeah, what, what's the challenge of having two options with Army's conference? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what that looks like again. You know, it's just it's just so different. It's so unique. I know uh, Mike and Rice have to play both of them this year. We only got to play one of them. Uh, you'd hate to have to play both of them in the same year. Uh, it's just it's impossible to duplicate that offense all week and, and scout team. And, uh, those guys are the best part of their day is going to football practice. They are preparing to battle for our country. And uh, if you ask our players, that's probably the worst part of their day is going to football practice. <laughs> well, and what does it mean about the Americans that Army decided that this was the place they wanted to be? I think it's awesome. I think it's a great addition, story program. They're about the right stuff. It's, it's fascinating to me that in the world of transfer portal NIL, I can't wait to see how well Navy and Army do uh, because they're still made about the right stuff. Jeff, with Oscar, we were talking to Oscar about kind of his fitness transformation and trying to get more NFL ready. How has that progressed through the summer? How does he look? He looks great. He had to tell you the exact number. He's down on weight. Uh, 
he says 20, I say 30. He swears he's never the 290s. I believe he was. So we have a debate. We have a debate on that. But he's really worked hard at it. Sydney's been good for him there. I know uh, she's been helping him with his diet as well. So we've, we've all been trying to help Oscar. He doesn't want to play center or guard at the next level. So his chance to play tight end was to get leaner and faster. And he's taking on the challenge. I understand once you get engaged, it might go the other way. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I can say that uh, – that definitely happened, and when when your wife gets pregnant three times, you, you stack on some weight during those times too. Because you want to you want to eat with her, you can't leave her alone. <laughs> Shout out, Care Bear. Hey, coach, uh, you got a Friday night game against North Texas State this year. I'm just curious about your thoughts on the state rivalry and uh, what your expectations are for that game. Love the rivalry. Uh, Eric Morris is a uh, one of my dear friends. And I have a lot of he's much younger than me, obviously, but I have a lot of respect for what he did in high school. Texas high school roots there, football player, basketball player, baseball player. Uh, you know, his quarterback, Chandler Morris, uh, I've known him literally his entire life. I know how great of a player he is. Hate playing on Friday nights. Uh, that's, you know, you can look at our stats at UTSA. You come play us on Friday night, our crowd's half of what it normally is. Because you're in, it's Friday night lights in Texas. It's, it's made for high school football. And I wish we could stay on Saturdays. It's above my pay grade. Uh, but love the rivalry, love the coach, uh, love the quarterback. Uh, hate playing on Friday night, though. Coach, what's your uh, 